media he moment. covers your story, your story will be covered from the ground up. Listen, this is the epitome of when people say that you're not ready, you show them that you don't need for them to think you're ready when you know you're ready. And this is the premiere of the Jason Lee Show here. And, 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 not only is this the first show, but it's probably one of the most important shows that'll go down in history because this person that is my first guest is, yes, she's a big international superstar, fashionista, mother, wife, and all those things, but to me, she's just my girl that I talk to probably more than I talk to any of the people that I'm trying to marry. Uh, please <laughs> welcome Cardi B. So everybody knows that um, if I were not a gay man, I would be uh, married to Rihanna. ASAP kind of beat me to it. But uh, you know, one thing that's crazy is when I posted who everybody wanted to be my first guest, it was you and Rihanna. <laughs> everybody, everybody loves Cardi. So you haven't been here to Hollywood Unlocked and to the Jason Lee Show. I mean, it's a new show, but you haven't been to Hollywood Unlocked in probably six years. The six years, for real, for That's real. That's great. But it seems like, is, is, is it my fault because we became friends and we talk every day, or are you just busy and... No, I mean, if you really notice, Jason, I haven't really been doing interviews like that. I really haven't. Yeah. Like, every single time that I do interviews, it's like a, a, like a radio run interview. I haven't... Over Zoom over Zoom, like I haven't really done interviews in a minute. And I don't know, is it because of like the COVID thing? Or I don't know, it's because I have built so much anxiety that I'm not as open as I used to be. So I don't know what it is, but I just really haven't done like interviews like that in a but minute. It's funny that you say that because I was telling somebody the other day, they were like, they were talking about, you know, you on social media and how charismatic you are and funny, this and that. And I'm like, if you meet with Cardi in person, I, I told him about the story when we went to Crustaceans and we were all sitting there having dinner and you were eating your octopus in the corner and you were in your phone the entire time and you weren't talking because you're really an introvert. People think that who you yeah. are on social media is who they're going to run into on the street. Yes, I'm really like an introvert. like and, and people like can believe that and I don't know. I don't know. That's just how I mean. I'm like a popular loner though. Why though? Because this is the thing. I think you're inconsistent, though. Because first, you say, when I'm done, when I have my kid, I'm popping, I'm going to be outside every day. But now you're still in the studio every day. You're working every day. You're at home with your kids every day. So, like, you still ain't popping out the way that you told me you Okay, no, out. wait. I'm popping out a little bit more. Because the thing about it is, I didn't want it to pop out after I had my son. Because I told you, like, I wanted to get my body done first. Yeah. And it's like, you know, a lot of people thought that, like, when I gave birth, I automatically went to do surgery. No, I literally waited, like seven months to uh, do surgery because you have to like, yeah. Yeah, but see, this is the thing. I know you say you didn't have a problem talking about surgery today. I've always, ever since I've seen you when you did the interview here six years ago, uh, and even up to date, I mean, now clearly we've seen, you've, you've done some work, but I've always thought you were beautiful. Did you, did you know you wanted to do different work to your body along the way? Or like, when did you decide you were gonna make a change? Um. I always wanted to like to do certain things, you know, like a lot of people, and and this is the thing, the tricky thing about a lot of people, right? People will be assuming that like when you do surgery or something, like you're insecure about yourself or you hurt, hurt like hate yourself. And that's just not the truth. I just be feeling like if I want to correct something, I want to do a little sign, something like, I don't give a fuck, I'm, I'm going to do it. Like, I just like, I like being perfect. I like a certain type of body, like for myself. And if I want to do it, I do it. And then it's like, when it comes like to think like, I always felt like I had a big nose, even when like, even when like, uh, before I was famous, I was like, damn, I got my daddy's nose. <laughs> Poppy don't have a big nose. Poppy, don't, Poppy don't have a big no, nose. No, my dad have a nose. And then the mother gave it to me. But I was always afraid to do my nose. And I finally took that step. Because when you said, when you told me you were going to do your nose, I honestly did not understand it. Because I've always thought you were beautiful. I, I will say this But it wasn't because of the beautiful. I just never really liked my nose. And I never said this, but I'm going to say it. I was gonna do it with my friend. Her uh. name is Surgeon Maid. I was gonna do a live with her about it, but since we here, we here. So you know, like around 2018, 2019, everybody was like, "Oh, there's a non-surgical way for your nose to get smaller, and that's fillers." And I, I, think I never it, heard that. Yes, 
And I feel like it's really important for me to tell this. So um, if anybody like gets into these type of things, like remember, I'm letting y'all know this. Everybody kept saying like, there's a non-surgical way to get your nose smaller. And that's doing fillers. So I did fillers on my nose, right, in 2019. And that my nose But I thought up. filler, because I just got fillers. Fillers, I use, you put in to make it a little puffier, right? I don't really know. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about the nose. Right, so when you put it in, if you were trying to make the nose smaller, how would the fillers make it smaller? Listen, when you see things on Instagram. <laughs> you just believe like, I'm going to try it. makes sense. Like when you see it on Instagram. But fillers make my nose longer like it make the tip of my nose longer like you will see it in 2019 like my nose got longer it got wider and i'm like oh my gosh what the f i f on my nose i have no choice but to actually do my nose so in 2020 after wap like i got my nose done no i remember when it looked longer but i thought that was just maybe you had did some other work to make the nose look longer no i did some fillers on my nose and i f it up i was like what the f Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. What the f did I did to myself? Like, oh my gosh, just take take these fillers out. And it's like, no matter how much I try to like take the fillers out, it just up my tip. So in 2020, after WAP, I just got my nose done. Okay, so how do you decide who you're gonna go to and trust to touch your face or your body? Because I remember the time we were at uh, Chris's house and Kim gave you a list of people you could call to get help. Yeah. You didn't call none of those people. You just went and did at home. No, I, I called. I called a couple of people that that she gave me. Okay, so okay. Well, the nose looks great. I will say this: you walked in here earlier, and I looked at you, and I, I I feel like I talk to you every day. Usually, it's you take you, you know you're on the toilet or you're in the car or you're with your kids or you're doing eating. But to look at you, you look great. So we're done. Oh, I'm done. I'm okay. Done. I look I look I look great. I look. Does Cardi look great? I think Cardi looks great. <laughs> We, we can't afford a big set with a big audience, but we do with what, uh, well with what we can. Okay, I don't know what I'm drinking right now, but this set is real Dominican today because I felt like I got two Dominican assistants, and you know I'm, a, a, I'm, I'm, I'm head over heels for your toxic community. What is this drink? Because it is great. So this is actually a Puerto Rican drink. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, we got Coquito the... is Puerto Rican. It's like a real Puerto Rican thing, but like I got introduced to it a couple of years ago, and it's just like, it's delicious. Okay, bring out the first gift, please, um, so we can oh, get this right. Oh, gosh, you got gift. Yeah. Yes. Give, me, give no. me gift later because you no, know no, how I... No, no, we got to give you this gift right All now right. because because we got the production wrong. I specifically said, because I know sometimes Dominicans and Puerto Ricans don't be on the same page. Just <laughs> we got a little fake people. Her we her love each other. Long. Open, okay. Okay. Just really quick. So Jason knows, that, Jason knows that I'm not like a lovey-dovey, cookly cookly person. No, but here, uh, but this, wait, there's one more. There's one more. There's uh, one more. Uh, Mama Juana. So, go ahead. Thank you. You know what's so crazy? Literally in December, it was in December. Um, you ain't got to hold those if you don't want to. <laughs> no, no, because it's funny because um, for the first time ever, like in December, Offset drunk for the first time, Brugal and Mama Juana. He's like, oh, I like this. He went to my grandmother's house with my cousin. He's like, I like this. Wait, your grandmother is the funniest. If you do a reality show, I know you, you're past all that. You're too rich and you, you have too much money. <laughs> Your grandmother will be the star of the show. Yeah, my grandma's funny. She be she be coming at us like a dancing too. Her and Offset dancing at um, uh, Culture's birthday party. Yeah, the, she's she's a star. <laughs> oh, my grandma, my grandma's a trip. Yeah, but this it was the first time that he drank this, and he was so sick. The next day, he was like, "I can never drink that again." But he was lit in my grandma's house. Okay, like, I've never had that. Let's put that down here. Let's let's get that from her. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So we, we It's got... good to have it in LA. But this is good though. So this right here is going to be the thing that brings Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic together. This is it. Coquito will bring them together. Okay, let's keep Coquito in. All right, so look, now that I got you on the show and everybody knows I like to cut up, I want to talk about all the L's we've taken. Oh, God, a lot. I want to talk about life, love, lawsuits, <laughs> and loss. Because since I met you, you know, I, I told you I was laying up in the bed in the Bronx with the Spanish boy, looking at Instagram years ago, and here you were talking the most reckless on Instagram, and I fell in love with you then. And and I and I think I'm a man manifester, right? I say I love this person, I want to meet them, and then I met you. Do you know where I met you at? Do you remember the first time? It was at Diddy's house, at Diddy's house party, and now my show is on Revolt. That's the first thing. Ah. See, I'm saying it all comes together. It all comes together. It all comes together. 
And so then I think about, okay, when we did our first interview and you came in the studio, and this was right as Bodak Yellow was about to pop. And at the time, your team was like, yo, this girl, I didn't know who a Cardi, I mean, I knew who you were at Cardi B online, but the way they were pitching this song, Bodak Yellow, they were pitching the song. I'm like, I don't know what a Bodak Yellow is. I don't know what none of that is. And then when you came in the studio and they told me this song is going to be a hit and then it just blew up and then bam. Was that when you knew like my life was going to change? Um, kind of, kind of, sort of, because this is the thing, right? I felt like uh, I was rapping for two years, two years before Borak Yellow, right? And I just keep doing these mixtapes. And uh, I just felt like I kept going hard in the pain in the studio and everything. And it got to the point that I just feel like I keep just getting rejected. I keep getting rejected by um, people that I was presenting my music to. And then was it I, like labels or just everybody? Labels, a lot of people, a lot of DJs. There was like, because you know what's so crazy? A lot of people think that like, Loving hip hop to me was like a blessing and a curse for, mm -hmm. for real because I felt like it was a blessing because of course it introduced me to a very much wider audience. However, I feel like it's hard for people to take you serious in the music industry when you like in on loving hip hop you mean and whatever. when you first started, because I will say you're the only person, because even to this day, no matter what, I could be in Forbes, head of media, Kanye West, this, that, whatever, they still say, Jason Lee, who was on Love & Hip Hop, you, I don't feel like, I feel like you broke way out of that now. Yeah, right? but it was like a little bit difficult when it came like to the music. Okay. When it came like Being to Being taken like, serious as an yeah, artist. Yeah, as an artist. And um, like, there was like a couple of times that I went to labels and they're like, oh, we will sign you for 50,000. We will sign you for 30,000. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like my... Love and hip hop check is more than that. Like I'm, I'm making that like almost like in a in a week or so. Like I feel like I'm getting robbed or 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 something. You know, like I, I feel like a lot of people just don't understand. Like when you don't pop off because of a song, because some people just pop off because of a hot song or something. Mm -hmm. I had to like literally prove myself. So when I was putting out my mixtape, promoters they wanted to book me for parties. So I was like, instead of you booking me for a party, why don't you pay? Instead of oh, a party, yeah, a concert. Mm -hmm. So I had to. I did my own tour. I had mm -hmm. artists coming and in. You were investing your own money too. Yes, I invested mm -hmm. my own money in my everything, from my videos to my looks, because I had to change uh, my looks around and everything. Mm -hmm. To uh, bringing those artists that were like opening up for me, I had to pay for their like for their road trips, for their hotels. Um, everything, everything for the engineers, everything, everything, everything. And I just feel like I kept trying and trying and trying. And it got to the point that I felt like, you know what? I, I'm starting to get comfortable. Like I'm starting to get comfortable with putting mixtapes and the low numbers that I was doing. Like I was being- What, what part was comfortable? What, it was that it was tracking or? I was being satisfied with like, like, like not taking things personal, like, personal. Like I just was almost like feeling like, this is it for me. Like, mm. this is it for me. Like, they're not going to take me serious. I might as well start just doing music videos. I just know that it's, you might get two, three million views. It's just not going to go more than that. But so you actually were letting it get to your head? It was getting to my head because I felt like I kept trying. And uh, I kept trying. And, like, so many people from my city was, like, making it, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm not making it. I feel like I kept pushing forever and everything, and I'm like, I don't get it. Like, it's like everywhere I go, people are singing it and rapping it, but it's like nobody want to accept it, nobody want to play it, nobody want to like whatever the f And when I met Offset, and um, when I met Offset, and like I met the Migos and everything, and, um, oh, and by the way, a lot of artists, they didn't want to give me a feature. Like, now it's easier for female rappers mm -hmm. to get features. But why, why at the time did they not want to Because I, I just feel like they didn't really believe in me like that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, like I was coming from love and hip-hop, so it's like, oh, whatever. Well, and at the time, too, there weren't a lot of women doing hip-hop. I mean, really yes. competitive in, in lane. Uh, yeah, and well, I feel like, and I will say, I'll give you your credit, because I do feel like... In many ways, I just said this to the president of the United States, literally at the Christmas party. I said, Mr. President, you're the most underrated president that I've ever seen. And I feel like people haven't really given you the credit for like, not even just the hustle, but the stick to the fact that you've never given up, the fact that you, you, you still, you know, get doubted or, or people 
And like, you, it's, it's like you always have to constantly prove yourself when you open up the, the game for a lot more women to come behind you. Yeah, well, I feel like I feel like people are gonna always do that because I feel like um, to this like I feel like to this day there there's women there are legend women like because there's a whole bunch mm -hmm. and they still like always not question but it's always like oh but they're not better than this they're not better than that they're not better. I feel like they're always gonna do that with women like it's like you when you're a woman like I feel like you're gonna have to constantly prove yourself all the time all the time. But why is that? Why? Because I feel like when you came in and then you know starting to see all these other women come behind you. It's really just rap now. It's not about women versus men, at least the way I look at it. Because I look at your numbers, I look at how you've charted the Grammy and all that. You're you're up there competitive with the Drakes and the people who are doing music. So why is it that they why is it that women get treated differently than men when it comes to hip hop? Or is that just the world we live in? I just feel like that's just the world we live in. It's never gonna be you. It's never gonna be something that you did or something that you say. It's just like they're always gonna have fun doing it. Like people just need like a topic to talk about. People just need something like. I mean, I feel like like now that I see things in a broader way, I feel like that's just what moves the world. And it's like it's inevitable to happen. Because you know what? I feel like I came in the game real humble. I came in the game, I don't want no titles. Um, people could see my past tweets, people could see past videos that I have made. I don't want I don't want no titles, I don't want nobody feeling a certain type no of way. No comparisons either. I don't want no comparisons. I just want to make it. Like, mm -hmm. I just want to make it. Like, I was so hungry. I just want to make it. That's all. Like, I just want my foot in there. Like, mm -hmm. I want my foot inside that door. Like, that's that's what I, I want. And like, no matter how much you prevent it or not, like, it's like, it's gonna, it's gonna happen because people gonna. But that's the thing that I fight with you the most when we're on the phone, because even to like in the last, I don't know, six, seven years we've been friends, you've never once called the hate on anybody else. Like, it's always about you, how you know, you, when you feel like you put your own pressure and when you turn your own pressure up, you're like, yo, I'm about to go do this, this, this. It's always about the moves that you're gonna make. Um, why do you feel being somebody who never, publicly goes after other people or somebody that gets the most hate? I don't know why I get so much hate. I don't know is it because I'm very like vocal or I don't know is because, I don't know. I think it's like probably like three factors. I feel like, I don't know I get a lot of hate. Is it because I respond to it? So people- Oh, you respond to it. I respond to you it. You will shut the, you will stop the <laughs> whole world with a tweet. My team, as soon as Cardi tweet, Cardi tweets could have been, a segment at Hollywood a lot because they'd be like, yo, my team, Keisha right there, she'd be like, Cardi tweeted. Cardi, what, what, what did Cardi do? You will respond. I will respond. So I don't, I don't know, is it because, I don't know, I don't know, is it because um, people know that I will respond to it, so people just want to respond out of thing and people just want drama off of me. Cause I'm very sensitive. I ain't going for it. I'm going. I'm but that's very sensitive. You're a you know what I'm saying? Like that's just. I don't know is what it is. I'm just a little crazy, okay. crazy. I don't know, is it because. Um, I am really, I feel like I'm too nice. I have to be too nice because people, other people told me that I'm too nice, that I'm too humble, that I'm too this, that I'm too that. And I was talking to another Libra about that, that I like, it's like, we humble, but we could really like, like what? Please, I could really. You're like that on social media, but you are humble. And I think that's the biggest problem that I have with you is that you are so humble. Because you say you want to put your foot in the door, but a lot of people, I feel like when they get in the industry, they just want to put their foot on people's necks. You, you, you don't come like, I mean, the numbers do. The numbers have been on a lot of people's necks, but I, I don't feel like you've ever taken that approach to how you've entered anything, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm just. Maybe that's what I have to do. Maybe that's what I have to do. I don't know. I, whatever. I don't know. It's like different factors that I feel like people just be like, probably like hating on me or something like that. But I always felt like, um, like in my whole life, it, it has been like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm such an introvert too. Like I don't really, tr coming from the Bronx and and like dealing with a lot of like, like shysty, grimy girls and men that it's just like, that's why I'm such a, I guess I'm such an introvert. And I always feel like because of my attitude, like I'm very flamboyant. I'm very like, I'm not a person that to, that's gonna be silent mm -hmm. and, so you don't feel like, because I was looking at your social media, 148 million Instagram followers, 27.6 million Twitter followers. You don't you don't ever feel like, you know what, I ain't got time for none of this. I'm just, I mean, because you- I make a little time. <laughs> no, because you catch everything. You catch everything. Like you're like, you're like, your mind is literally like an encyclopedia of shade. You'd be like, <laughs> back in 1992, 
I'm like 1992, I was still in middle school, I mean, I was in high school, but no, you, you do remember everything. But I, I, on one hand, I feel like it's the thing that made you famous because yeah. social media, love and hip hop didn't make you famous. Social media yeah, made social you famous. Yeah, social media make, you, make me famous. That's why I always say like, it's like social media made yeah. me famous. Like. I feel like love and hip hop commercialized it, yeah. but like you, you were hood famous. You were like culture famous. Like everybody yeah. knew who Cardi B was, and everybody looked to you for laughter. The one thing that bothers me is that I feel like your star has gotten so big now, and you have so many people that hold you like up to some level of responsibility that you can't be that funny girl we just want to escape with anymore. Yes, because now if you have like now if you don't have like the popular opinion, that fucks off the money. That fucks off everything up the money that fucks up the everything and then it's just like like sometimes right when I want to talk about a relationship mm -hmm. because I feel like every girl every man everybody around me uh, up and down everybody have relationship drama so it's like if I talk about relationship drama or something it's like oh but this this and that because I'm married so it's why like, does everything you say have to be like a sub like it's not a sub or, or it could be a it's thought either, it's either a sub <laughs> or it's or it's either something that like you're probably going through in, in your life and it's like no these are I'm talking about experience I'm talking about something that my homegirl went through I'm so, talking about something that my homeboy or I'm talking about things that I'm seeing on mm -hmm. online so it's just like you gotta like be careful about something like one time one time I said right like it's like hey ladies. Uh, men, men do peep the little things. They like when you lotion up, they you this, this and that. And it's like, why do you have to do it for a man for? Why do you? And it's like, oh my God, forget it. <laughs> but, oh but, my God, the, <laughs> the, 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 what's it called? Like the, 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 the extreme feminists yeah. were killing me. And it's just like, nowadays you can, you can't even do anything. You but, can't but say But I will anything. say on behalf of everybody watching and everybody in the room, we miss that. Like we miss your your opinions because you say everybody's thinking and you are at a level where you know some folks that may not look like us are like uh, pull it back but i feel like white people let it do everybody loves when you go on a rant about some even like we're gonna talk about the lettuce in a minute you f up farming right now like you i'm the other day i'm getting texts from my team like yo this is crazy lettuce this really is expensive my now you have my whole team at the grocery store checking people about the price of lettuce because everything is so expensive and you want to know something everybody's like oh but why you care you rich this and that i don't think people really understand like look i get a budget of everything that that's being spent in my house and i'm seeing like damn the groceries are being really expensive but are and you really looking yes because when i got my christmas tree this year as a former foster kid i was so proud of myself i was like i got this beautiful christmas tree i facetimed her like look at my tree she was like, yeah, mine are a lot more expensive than that, and I got many more than that. I was like, oh, well, okay, thanks. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I was proud, but, you know? But everything that, that moves in the house, mm -hmm. I have to see, because it's like there's a lot of people that, that lives in my house, and I give, like, a certain amount of money in the car. So it's like when, my, when I'm seeing the groceries and my aunt is saying, like, oh, no, we need more money in the car. And it's like, what you mean y'all need more money? I need to see what the hell is being spent. So when I go to the supermarket... And it's like, oh my God. I remember when I had Wait, to Wait, you go to the supermarket? Yeah. No, you don't. I go, I be outside. <laughs> I be in Target. I be in the supermarket. I make I make a lot of runs myself because I don't like being in the house a lot. Like, I have to do things myself. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got to go shopping myself. Is, it, is that your way of feeling normal? Uh, it's just, I just can't, I just don't want to be, be locked in. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, like, I take my daughter to school. I take my daughter to dance class. Like, I go to my aunt's house. Mm -hmm. I go to the hood all the time. Like. I be going to Fordham, everything, and people won't even know that it's me because I wear a mask, all yeah, that. We see, we saw you pull up with the hoodie, with the with the hat on. We know you pull up to the hood. Yeah, I pull up anywhere. I be like Cardi, what? I don't know. Is that Dykeman? I will go to Dykeman. Like <laughs> Dykeman. I be outside. Dykeman, yeah. And then like went, going to the supermarket with my cousins, it, it just be lit. It's it's a fun time. And then when I'm seeing the prices, I'm like, yo, I remember when I used to like grocery shop, like when I used to live in my little apartment in Edgewater, and everything has tripled like this. Real. So now that your life is so big, you got more Birkin bags than all the women Floyd Mayweather dates. <laughs> um, you have all the jewelry. By the way, I know I told you off camera, you bought me a really beautiful um, uh, Cuban link. I had never had a Cuban link. I started feeling like a rapper. I actually went in the studio and did a song with Don, too. Um, and then I let someone in the night and he stole it from me. I didn't even want to. I, 
Oh, please, you're gagging. Close your mouth. Stole it from me. I didn't want to tell her because I was so proud of the gift. And so I went and bought two more Cuban links to act like I was upgrading my jewelry so you wouldn't notice it. But I had to tell you because I, I would just hope that you buy me another one for my next birthday. But um, <laughs> but no, that was a nice gift. So your, your life is large. Um, another thing, another L I'll say is you're super loyal. Um, every time I do something bad, I don't even say it's bad. I be doing some Sometimes to get under certain people's skin because I know how to get people's attention. You're the only person with the courage to call me and check me. Like you're always calling me and saying, yo, that was fucked up. Go fix that. You need to go reword this. You, I know they say your Cardi would unlock, but let's be very clear. You don't control Hollywood unlock, but as a friend, you do look out for me and tell me, as you do with all your friends, like how they can be better people. Um, but I think we do that to each other, though. Mm -hmm. I think we do that to each other. And I think that like a lot of people... I think that a lot of people think, right, that it's like, when I'm cool with people, people just think they're like, oh, they just be kissing my ass, or like, uh, they be like catering. Or this. in your pocket, or, or what they say, you pay me. Yeah. They think, they're, they're, they think there's a Cardi B payroll. <laughs> no, there's and no can we payroll. just clear that air real quick? No. You don't write checks. Your label, no. Atlantic, Julie, Kaiser, y'all should write me checks because <laughs> we actually, my team loves Cardi B, so we, we promote you. Just because we like you, and yeah. you know, we we poke sometimes too. But you know, they think you're paying me or giving me some kind of no lord check. I mean, and and this is the thing that like I be telling people like it's like because sometimes people think that you probably don't like somebody because of me or because of that, and it's like I cannot control Jason. Mm -mm. Like I cannot control Jason, and like I don't think people understand. Like sometimes me and you, like we do be arguing. Yeah. Like we do be arguing. You you will call me. And she Cardi <laughs> called me one day. My chef just started. My chef that works with me now. He had just started. He's in the kitchen cooking. You call me. I open the Facetime and you cuss me all the way out. And <laughs> and you know he has signed an NDA, so he tries to like not act like he you know knows what's going on. He was gagging, and then I left. I'm like, she's like a sister. I hung up on you. You call me back. Did you hang up on me? But I feel like people don't feel like we're really friends that like really fight. Yeah, I think because I think people just think that like we don't want to like hear it or like we just be like, oh, evil twin. We doing <laughs> like evil we stuff. We plotting. No, and it's crazy because we have argued so much with each other because we have like different point of views on certain type of things and stuff. And like when you think. When I think like you said something like it's like, yo, I don't think you should have said that. Like that's a little bit unsensitive. Or like sometimes when you think like I'm doing too much, like damn, like you need to stop. Like you look I, I don't crazy. Say, I don't say damn. He don't say damn, but he be like, why are you doing yeah. all of that? Why well, are you saying all of that? That's because when I see you, I, I I said this to Rihanna, I've said this to Floyd, I've said this to uh, Tiffany Haddish. When I see you, the four of you, I don't really see you as like Cardi B, the the this and that. I know you got all the followers, and I, I want some clout. I'll do anything for clout. Uh, okay. But I, I literally see you as like this generation Cinderella. I was friends with Queen Latifah. I've been friends with her for 30 years. We've had moments together yeah. with her. I saw her when she was getting carjacked, getting arrested with guns, smoking weed, doing all these different things. And I mean, I see like where you've come from and where you are, but I see so many other girls looking at you like, yo, she did it. And you still hold it down for the Bronx. Like you still hold it down and are connected to where you come from. So for me, I just always want to like, oh, don't do that because... I want you to yeah. keep soaring, you know? Yeah. And the same I think I feel for me too, you know? Yeah, and and the thing about it is that it's like right now, we're talking so much that like we got all these senses and stuff, but we are hard-headed. Yeah. We are hard We both are really hard-headed. So it's like, we be we be we be going at it. We be like thing and but like that's the type of people that you have to have like around because sometimes like I said, like I'm a little bit sensitive. So sometimes I might go off on something like like when me and a blogger we had a disagreement mm -hmm. and you was like, Well, honestly, as a blogger, this how I feel about it. And it's like, but you're not seeing my my I tell you like I don't feel like you're seeing my point of view. And you was like, Well, you all well, I'm telling you my point of view as a blogger and how another blogger will feel. Mm -hmm. So this is why you have to. This, I think this, it's and the that. problem isn't isn't the blogger. It's the fact that you don't see yourself as a superstar. You don't see yourself. You have you have not accepted. I mean, I think you've accepted when you get the checks because I know I'm trying to bring you deals. You like ain't enough zeros on that. Oh, I ain't coming out the house for that. But and you're getting money. I can't even tell you the amount of money that she's turned down. Like you're getting money, um, and so it feels good to touch you sometimes because I hope it rubs off. But no. I think you don't see yourself as like the
the way the world sees you as this mega superstar. Like, I feel like you're still so real in your mind in terms of who you are because you're grounded with your family. Your glam team, Erica, Tokyo, you, you know, Colin, you keep the same people around. Like, you're loyal to the people who are loyal to you. But you, you I, I just don't get it because I think what I'm saying is, why are you, why are you wasting your time with that? You know, like an elephant doesn't waste time with an ant. Even though that body is snatched, you're not an elephant. But you know what I mean? Like, you know. I don't know. I just... But I feel like every conversation we've ever had privately about any female rapper has always been positive. Why do people feel like you and I have clicked up to attack anybody online? Because we've never had not one negative conversation. I just feel like that's just what people on, on the internet is going to do. Mm -hmm. Like that that's just what they're gonna do. You know, you know what's so crazy? Like the deep problem that I had with the shave room, with the deep problem that I had with the shave room, and this happened like around 2017, 2018. Um, they were posting me too much. They were posting me too much, posting me too much. And every single time that they post me, people were saying, like, oh. Payola, Payola, Payola. I know you paying the shade room. Oh, you said the same about me too. Yes. <laughs> like, I know you paying the shade room so they could keep you up there. Like, oh my gosh, how much is she paying ya yeah, for this, this, and that? And I started to go crazy. Like, what, I literally. What part of it was making you go crazy? Because it was getting louder and louder and people because started it was believing getting, it? Because it was getting louder and louder and like, it wasn't real. And then it got to the point that I started hitting them up like, why you keep posting me? Stop posting me. You literally see what people are saying. Can y'all just leave me alone? I feel like they were posting me and they kept seeing what people were saying on purpose. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, and now that I'm like oh, a little bit older and more, I'm more understanding, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I noticed that it's like they wasn't posting me on purpose so people mm -hmm. could say that. It was just posting me because I was really hot. I was really popular at the time. You are hot and still popping. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm still hot. I'm still popping. But, but you took it differently. Yeah, because I wasn't evolved mentally as a star. Mm -hmm. But you weren't seeing yourself as a star. That I, was the thing. Yeah, and I, and I wasn't seeing myself as a star. But, like, you know, like, when... Somebody has a lot of motion and somebody have a lot of momentum. I see that people are gonna keep posting them and posting them and posting them because they hot. But I wasn't seeing that. Yeah. I, I wasn't seeing that. I just felt like I was literally going crazy. Mm -hmm. Like my mind was fucked mm -hmm. up. But it's what I love about you is you called me and you said, call Angie. We got on the phone and y'all had a good woman to woman conversation. I think that like that's what makes you different. And that's why I think even you being here. It shows a lot of superstars like you can still be that superstar and still be connected enough to reach out and like figure things out, you know? But I feel like people post you because one, you have the most beautiful kids, you have the biggest ice collection, you have more Birkin bags we already talked about. Your 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 escapism for a lot of people who are going through hardship like COVID and stuff to be able to watch you and yeah, you know, but like in enjoy the your life. In the beginning, like I think like in 2017 or 2018, like I didn't really understand that. Like, like I didn't understand that. Like, I didn't want to keep getting posted, posted, everything. Like, every tweet that I say, every clapback that I say, every comment that I say, anything that I like, every bull no, on my relationship. Like. People, like, if you like something, yeah, now, that's a... Yeah, I, that was just, like, literally driving me crazy because, mm -hmm. like... Oh, fame came to me and it all hit me all at once. And like people were just making allegations of me like, oh, you paying these people to think. And I'm like, no, I'm not paying them. Look, look, I'm not paying them. And I wanted to prove to people so bad that I wasn't paying people, that I wasn't like doing none of that, that it's like I was doing, I was going so crazy that people in the industry was looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Or no, like, it was driving you literally crazy. It was driving <laughs> me literally crazy, like to prove to people that the things that they were claiming that I was doing wasn't true. And it's like now that I see what what finally made it click for you. As time passed, like I see that it's like people only do these allegations or these certain things because they want you to stop doing it because they want you to ruin relationship with certain people. So they will post bad things or won't post you at all. So your hype will go down or something. Um, people will say that you're doing something too much. So whatever is working for you, it stops working for you. Like, for example, like in 20, 2020, 2021, right? Wob became hot. Wait, can we, can we first clear the air on um, who introduced you to Meg? Cause, oh, cause my I, cause, 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 uh, Back to y'all saying that Atlantic Records 
gives me checks. Not only did they not give me checks, I ain't got no plaque. I didn't get no, Julie, you can fix that. I ain't get no, I, ain't, I don't even want no WAP, but I didn't get no nothing. And I remember being in the hotel with you and the team. Uh, I think Tokyo was there and Colin and, and Brooklyn Giant, different people, and you were playing all these different songs you had. And when you got to that song, everybody in the room looked at each other was like, and, and Meg wasn't on it at the time. Mm -hmm. We all heard that she was like, yo, the gays is gonna be in the club like my WAP, even though they ain't got the WAP. Then you gonna have the strippers, then you gonna have the women, like it you felt it was a hit. You knew you knew that was gonna be like out of here. I I I kinda did, but I kinda didn't because I'm really hard on myself with music. But like you did put us on the phone one time, like I think he was in a party with her. He was, was like, at Look at Megan, this the, is Megan. I was at the MTV Awards. Yeah, she was, and he was like, Cardi, this is Megan. Then I'm like, okay, Jason, like let me just get to know the girl. Let me let me find a record that I think she will fit on. Let me She didn't. Then I sent her Meg's number and then they did the record and I need my plaque. <laughs> no, but that song was and then you even put in Kylie in there, just the way you and and Another thing, another factor people may not know is um, I did see the rough cut of the video. I'm going to tell you how before it came out and I saw that they didn't give enough of the women enough shine. The other women, Rosalia, Sukiana, and Lotto, right? Yeah. And you, your note to them was put them more in the video. And I thought like, ain't no, see, and you're not going to say all this. She, and this is kind of hard interviewing your friend because you know more than, you know, she's going to probably text me later like, you talk too much. But I feel like that goes back to really the heart of who you are as a woman. Like you are, you have always been a woman to cheerlead on other women. And in, 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 I can tell you in my lane, I try to bring other people in the media in when I'm on my rise. And it's like, I'm always constantly getting hated on. And I didn't understand why you were so interested in helping everybody else when you're trying to figure out your own. I mean, it's not really about like, I'm trying to like help because sometimes I, pe I see people like just say like, oh, she just, she showing fake love support. Like she trying to make that into a brand. It's like, or I always listen to more female music. Of course, I'm a female. So like I listen to more female artists. So like when I see somebody that like I like, I like their content or I like their music, like it's like, I'm a, I'm a post it. Like I always thought Sukiana was funny. So it's like, I like her. I love Rosalia music. I love Normani music. I felt I, Ruby Rose, I liked her. And I felt like, oh, she gonna go like, mm -hmm. I see her going further and everything. And me and Megan, we was like, we want like to put like a lot of upcoming female rappers. Mm -hmm. And then we want to put like a a, a rap a artist from the Latin community. And we want to put an R&B yeah. artist. We want to put like a, a fire influencer. A fire, fire model. Did you, do you think you're, because like you said, after Bodak Yellow, and not, because a lot of the songs before Bodak Yellow was, they were hooded. Yeah. Your mixtapes were hooded. When you drop Bodak Yellow and then you followed up with other music, like, um, I like it like that. Another thing I'll say, you did I like it like that. Uh, you performed at the AMAs. I had got you booked at a club in West Hollywood. My Instagram had been deleted. You came to the after party and I said, oh my God, that performance, like you out of here, you out of here, you killed it. You were like, is your Instagram back? You didn't even like accept the acknowledgement that you just murdered it. Do you think that I like it like that was the thing that brought you immediate crossover where you just got accepted by the hood, Bodak Yellow, you got accepted by mainstream in Latin with that song, like your album, the first, well, we need the other album, it's coming, we can talk about that. <laughs> that album was so perfectly curated that it literally hit every market. I, I feel like it helped me blow up out the gate, but I didn't get to like really experience it like that. I didn't really get to see it for a hot minute because when I put out my album, like I I was pregnant, so like I had to sit down for a minute. Mm -hmm. And I was like a little bit nervous because I felt like, damn, is my career gonna be over? And luckily for my album, it, it didn't. Mm -hmm. When, after I gave birth, I did so much shows and everything, so I don't know. All right, so let's talk about love. So um, you're married to uh, a very famous rapper named Offset, uh, who I'm not going to ask you any Offset questions because I've already put in a request to interview him myself. <laughs> because I feel like I've been around him so much and yeah. so many times, and I've seen so much of his personal evolution that people yeah. have not acknowledged him for that I want to spend that moment with him. So I'm glad you that. Uh, you're famous, rich, and married. Has, is it hard? I mean, it's not hard now because... People aren't, they don't need to slide in your DMs because they know you have a husband who will pull up. But when, but when you look at the fact that you came into the game and didn't negotiate your career and having a family, are you proud of yourself for that? I don't know because it was just a feeling that I had. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just a feeling that I had. Like, I found out that I was, like, pregnant. 
like at a point where me and Offset wasn't like on really good terms. Mm -hmm. That I, like we was just in, on really good terms, and I found out I was pregnant, and I was so scared. I was scared to tell Atlantic. I was tell, I was scared to tell my team because we have worked you so didn't tell hard. Me. You didn't tell nobody. Yeah, like, <laughs> but it's that like, I have worked so hard and everything, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what's gonna happen after this? I just had this feeling like it's like it's, it's going to be okay, and then, like, when I was to the doctors, it was like you know you far along enough to know what gender you what the gender it is and I'm like oh my gosh curiosity killed me and then it's like okay I want to know and I found out it was a girl and I was like I always wanted to have a baby when I'm 25 years old I was 25 years old and I always wanted a girl and I was like maybe this is just a sign and I was like you know what I'm gonna have my baby was it ever a thought not to have a baby it was never it wasn't planned mm -hmm. it wasn't planned to have a baby it was just, it just happened, and it just happened like in my height of the career, um, the hype of my career. So I was like, I was very scared. Yeah, and you were I, very pregnant at Coachella. Yes. And I thought you were gonna go into labor right in the middle of that TS, TLC set. <laughs> I was nervous for you. And then you have this crazy career, you tour the world, you're this the biggest thing in the world, and then you decide to have, you're gonna have another baby in the midst of now a campaign almost like Rihanna's about this second album. Like people want this album. Did you? Plan wave, or did that just happen? That just happened again. I mean, me and Offset, we was not seen eye to eye. This was like the same year that I filed for divorce and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let him talk about mm -hmm. this because I'm, I'm gonna let him talk about this because what was one of the main thing that was really bothering me. Don't say it because I want him to say that. I'm gonna let him say it himself. Yeah. The main thing that was really bothering me. And y'all are going to be mad that I just stopped her. I know, but <laughs> I, I, because I want him to say it. Yeah, I want him to say it because I feel like that's really part of his story, like mm -hmm. his story. Mm -hmm. The main thing that that I wanted him to stop and everything, he stopped and he changed. And mm -hmm. it showed me that he wanted a change for he me. He fought for his family. Yes. And I like how when you were mad at him, you went on social media and checked everybody else about what they had to say about him. Like, who does that? Yeah, because it's what? like, y'all don't know us. Y'all don't know us. Y'all know what the is <laughs> going on. But this was in 2020. Like, it's like, it was just a, a It was a, a lot whole, going It on. was a lot. We started getting better and better. And then we was just We see the Instagram. Like, oh not, my not, gosh. Not the OnlyFans, but the Instagram. Like, we was just and then it's like, boom, I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh my gosh. So oh gosh. what, when you're in the midst of fighting, because the other day, literally I was doing the, um, I was doing something here in the studio and my team was moving around, getting everything set. And I was talking to somebody on the phone who I was trying to be serious about, who we're no longer talking. And I'm, we're, we're in this argument. And I finally just said, man, I'm out. I'm just out, I'm done. Like, I'm too busy, I have too many things going on. I didn't have nearly as much as what you have going on. So what made you stay and stick it through? It Was it being Dominican and family oriented? Was it just, you know, it was worth fighting for? Was it the kid? What was it? You could just see like when, when somebody's trying, mm -hmm. when somebody's trying. And I feel like we got married so young. Mm -hmm. We got married so young and we got married so like spontaneously. And we did know each other, but we kind of didn't know each other. We just like mm -hmm. was in love with each other and we had like a little toxic relationship. We got married six months of knowing each other. And like in those six months, we would see each other like twice or three times a month. Yeah. And it's like during our marriage and by time passing, we grew, mm -hmm. we grew with each other. Did you ever do therapy? We did, we did a little therapy. Mm -hmm. I'm in therapy, therapy now, it helps. It, it helps. But my therapist told me to stop drinking. I'm, I'm working on myself. Why? You're not even you're not even like a person that drink like that. Oh. You drink, ooh, you drink, ooh. but you you hey, drink, hey, but you're not an hey. alcoholic though. Ooh, ooh. my security. I was just telling my security before we started today. I've seen all my security come to work, but I've never seen them leave. Okay, but you like you were like a you. <laughs> Can like, I get some more of this uh, beautiful drink, please? No, but you drink when you like around people. Or you having fun. You're not like a person that is like, oh, I'm waking up and I'm gonna drink. So I'm in Paris with Cardi, and I pull up at her party, and her and Offset are sitting here. First of all, Cardi fake drinks. You fake drink. You know I brought this for you today. I know you like this. It, I know. I'll just pop it just in case. I put a little bedazzle on it because I couldn't afford real jewelry. I could drink. Let me drink. Let, I'm, I know. I'm I know. I, I know. Drink. I know what my friend likes. Listen, I pulled up on her and I said, hey, um, she goes, we're going to take shots. 
Offset can't even drink. Let's just start with that. Y'all are the worst okay. drinkers. But look. Y'all are the uh, worst right. to party with. Here I am drinking all the shots and you're sipping it, you know. Oh, but there's the thing, though. Offset never drank. I he know. He started drinking in 2021. I know, I So know. he's a new drinker. I just suck at drinking. I suck at everything. Like, cause I can't even smoke weed. That's why I don't no, smoke weed. at all. But you'll smoke I will Newports. be calling the cops. But you'll smoke Newports. Can we stop the cigarettes? Because when I was on Drink Champs and called you, you this said- This is what I don't like. This is what I don't <laughs> like, right? Everybody be like, oh, why you be smoking cigarettes? And these- be out here popping perks, doing cocaine, fentanyl, fentanyl, whatever. But y'all have a little, y'all have a problem with a little cigarette. <laughs> People could pop perks, but pop you, a this, pop a that, pop a kidney, but I can't do a little <laughs> cigarette. No, let me smoke my little cigarette. I don't think I've ever seen you smoke a full cigarette anyway, but whatever. No, I don't. <laughs> Right? You know me. <laughs> you don't smoke a full cigarette. I don't smoke a full cigarette. No, I've never seen that. And I'm like a, full, I, I'm a social cigarette smoker. Like, yeah. If I'm outside, I don't even have. But you're not a drinker. I've never, like, I will say at your birthday party, I, they kept, they, when they hand you that bottle of Hennessy and you kept taking shots and they kept, whoever kept trying to uh, encourage you to drink, I was in the back like, please stop because you can't drink and you was hitting the bottle straight. Henny. Henny. But, and that was the first time I seen you drunk. You are as funny as, <laughs> oh my God, you be violating. Who? You. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Okay, I have Rihanna right here. Uh, one night I got so excited that we were hanging out. I bought like $18,000 worth of bottles and Keisha was there. And the next morning she calls and she says, do you remember Rihanna slapped you? And I go, no, she slapped, like, I wanted to get it tattooed, you know, because it's an honor <laughs> to be slapped. But she slapped me in fun to kind of wake me up because it was a little too much. No, you be going in. Well, I don't, you be going in. Like, I was like, but you're funny, though. You think so? Yes, you was cutting up, but you was cutting yeah, up. Yeah, you see how your friend protects your secrets? We just go keep it moving. All right, so, uh, so, love, I have to talk about your, where's Culture's dog? Because Culture's dog was on Instagram and now it's disappeared. So Hennessy took my dog. See, I knew something was wrong with the dog. No, there's nothing wrong with it. It's like Hennessy was like, oh, I'll take the dog, this and that, and she hasn't given it back. But like, I'm not like a dog person. Yeah. I have a dog because of my daughter and because Offset. But Hennessy is like one of those real like dog people where like she get custom dog food and take them to dog parks. I'm not that. Yeah. She's that, and she hasn't given my dog. And back. that dog you got was energetic and was all over the house. And your all daughter, over. your daughter is literally a mini you. Mini me. When she really gets I'm control scared. of that Instagram, she got. She going. I'm what? scared. I'm really. Scared. I think about that every single day. How did Wave come out and look identical to her though? They literally look like twins, except he's smaller. But he got just as much ice as she does. Yeah. Wave got more money than everybody in the room. <laughs> I I be feeling like I don't know. Like Wave looks like. Mm, he looks like a lot of different people, mm. but he's... But your kids, yo, yo, do you ever sit back and say, thank God both of my kids are cute and got all their eyes and arms and legs? Because, I mean, yeah. I'm thinking of having a kid. I want to make sure... Is there a part in the process where you can make sure that all, like, the limbs are intact and everything? Well... I know that's probably... Look, I'm no, I'm not... Not I'm really. Not, no? Not, not really. Like, all right, so you just like, got prayed the whole way through. Well, if, like, like if it's, like, a certain type of disease or something, mm. they would tell you at five months. But, like, would you know, like, if one eye or, like, if a certain type of thing is wrong? Like, it's like, no. But I am really happy that my kids are really cute because it's, like, the way that people are so ruthless to me, I know that people couldn't wait to find a defect on my kids and... <laughs> it got to the point. It got to the point that they can say that my kids are ugly or something. So, like, people have made up that my daughter is autistic, and it's no, like they, that's. I've been saying they say that online. Yes, like I've been. I be fighting people because because it's like I don't find there's nothing wrong with autistic kids, but like my child is not, and it's like they don't. Y'all will find something so y'all want to find something so bad that y'all will make some mm -hmm. up like that. But it's like, for whatever. Well, there was somebody who uh, is a content creator that we shall not say no names because you all know who I'm going to talk about. I don't believe in giving uh, bottom uh, feeders any real shine, but you you did win a lawsuit against somebody who started a rumor that your daughter was not only not offsets, but uh, that you had herpes and all these different crazy, I mean, just the craziest things. And I, and I will say, you know, Hollywood Unlocked, I've been sued probably 24 times. <laughs> Mostly not not for anything I've said, but because of oh yeah, one thing I said. But the other things was just my using content I wasn't supposed to use. But I remember when you 
took the person on and filed a lawsuit. And everybody online was like, oh, she's crazy. Oh, she's this, she's that. And I ain't gonna lie. All of us in the content community was like, she ain't gonna win that. She, good luck, girl. <laughs> you ain't gonna win that. Cardi went and got Colin and she put on her best fashions and she went down to Atlanta and she did what had to be done and you won. And people were shocked. And I had to fight with people online because people started saying, you're next, you're gonna get sued because you said yeah. this. And I said, it's not that she's suing because the person has opinion. The person is making up lies that are not true, yes. that are damaging, and she's taking them on legally because that she has the right to. Yeah, I have come at every type of bloggers, every type of media, and um, I have come at everybody from internet, bloggers, Instagram, whatever the crap, to YouTubers, to uh, Telemundo. <laughs> you didn't cuss out Telemundo. Bad. Really? Bad. It, when you cuss out Telemundo, do you cuss them out in Spanish or English? I I, I forgot if it was English or Spanish, but I cursed them out bad For because the, yes, yes, you was, it's on, it's online because yeah. they were like all up in my dad's face and it's like. I saw that. Yeah, that uh, TMZ. I mm -hmm. cursed out TMZ <laughs> so many times. So many times, like, we we cool now and everything. Yeah. Page six, I have cursed out everybody. However... But you never filed a lawsuit. I never filed a lawsuit. And um, I never filed a lawsuit. This was getting out of hand. In 2019, I don't like, I don't like talking about my feelings because people, like... When you when you show weakness, people be like, "Oh, sympathy, sympathy." And I feel like I've, at first I thought they was doing it to me, but now I see they do that to every female. So you rapper. feel you can't like honestly be vulnerable because yes, be, I, I'm afraid to be vulnerable because people want to say, "Oh, you be looking for sympathy," but this is really my life. Like in 2019, I really I, I felt like I was like uh, uh, somebody dead inside a body like and I just I kept telling people like I just I just want to die like I just wish I was dead I want to be dead I want to be dead I want to be dead I just I, I can't escape my mind like my husband had to take me to a trip to the ER people from my from my management was calling him like I think there's something wrong with her you need to help it it, it was really bad mm. and is it's terrible when people are making fun of you when people are making fun of you you over, ain't about to cry no 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 okay. no Cause I, I ain't see about to cry. Your eyes, left eyes getting all white. Oh, I I've never seen you get emotional. You, you know how I am. I'm yeah. a, I cry in private. I'm a, I'm a gangster. <laughs> in 2019, like imagine somebody saying that you have a disease, and then thousands of people run with it. Run with it, and not only are they running with it, they calling you names. And then you have a you have a daughter, and like every other mom, you kissing your daughter and everything, and people are saying like, don't kiss culture on the lip, don't kiss your kid on the lip because you have herpes, blah, blah. That was insane. And then, not only that, but- And there was a video popping up on you every single day with that person, almost. Every, every day, and then like, just making extremely disgusting lies because you can make certain, not you can make, but it's like, some people are gonna say little stupid, stupid little lies but to make serious accusations like one w this this was the last straw for me the last straw was when that person said that my dad raped a teenager mm -hmm. like it's like now you're not messing with me you messing with somebody that's deeply dearly in my heart and you messing with my family and then you start messing with my friends mm -hmm. she's they said disgusting things about you mm -hmm. they said disgusting things about this girl i'm not even she said that I had HIV. She said that I was on cocaine and heroin. She said that I was a pedophile. Yeah. She gaslit all of that. It it became to a point that it was I like everybody being, around you. Yes. Yeah. It became to the point that I felt like I was being harassed and like my friends and my family were being tortured mm -hmm. for just being involved with me, mm -hmm. and it made me feel crazy because um, I saw the frustrations of certain of people around me. That it's like, yo, why the this, this and that, like, yo, why is this person bothering me? Like, it made me feel bad because it's like, damn, I feel like being related to me or being a friend with me of me was a curse. Do you think that was in a way to try to isolate all the people around you who are showing you love so you'd be by yourself? Yes, mm -hmm. it was definitely that. And that's why I just felt like it was just, and then my, then a, a lot of lies, a lot of bullshit for my husband, to my family, to mm -hmm. my friends, that I just felt like 
some some of my friends was like, yo, I cannot take like, this knowing like, oh my God. It got to the point that I felt like I was being, I was the reason of my friends and family misery. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, oh my God, like everything is my fault. Everything is my fault. Like people hate the people around me because of me. Like So you decided to take control and file a lawsuit and nobody thought you would win. I will say the only criticism I had is that you should have sued YouTube too. Because I do feel like YouTube has a responsibility to make sure they protect their community. And you're a big part of that community. You know what I mean? Well, one thing that I, I will say to YouTube, like, is that I did tell them and they just felt like, oh, but you're a celebrity and this and that. And it's like, I have proven that this person has violated every YouTube um, policy. Policy. I, I wasn't a celebrity, just a celebrity. I was some somebody that really wanted to be dead. I was somebody that I couldn't see my kid or I didn't want to talk to my to my man. Um, I didn't want to be around my friends because they, it, it just made me cry. Like I, I felt like I, it was a point that I felt like I was so weak of a person that I was weak to be a mom. Like mm. it's like, girl, you crying over these, this and that and your kid is right there. And it's just like, I just felt like and I think what people don't myself. realize, this was all happening while you have to go on tour, have to go to rehearsals, have to go to yeah. award shows, have to go to fittings, have to still run your business, still. And then to know Poppy, he's like the nicest guy who's literally not ever nobody, yeah. you know? I, I, just, I just could say, like, at, at that time period, I, I, have, I feel like I have been broke. I have been heartbroken. I have gone through a lot of tribulations in life. I have never felt so down in my life. Like, I just felt like my life was, like, great. Mm. And no matter what vacation I went to, no matter what good news, no matter whatever, everything was just so dark. Mm. And I was so depressed. I couldn't, I couldn't escape my mind. It's mm. like the only way I could escape my mind was sleeping. I couldn't have sex. I distanced myself from my own relationship. I distanced myself from everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just, it was just so dark. And I know you had originally asked for the videos I'll be taking down, and they still didn't take them down for a while. And then, and then, it, do you feel like, did you feel defeated? I felt defeated, and I felt like, wow, like, was this only happening to me? But now I see that this is just how they do celebrities. And when it's too late, that's when they start being like, oh, my God, like, Perfect example, I guess, is Britney Spears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that would be like an example. And sometimes... But she literally, I mean, not, yeah. this is me saying it, because I was around when she was out in the streets with Lindsay in Paris. They drove her crazy. Yeah. Which then complicated her life with her family and her kids and all her relationships. Yeah. And I mean, it broke her. Yeah. And like sometimes, you know, I feel like I just kept going and going and like ranting. And I think people thought that I was just crazy and super sensitive. But what people don't know is that, like, I was really going through, like, a real mental, like, I was mentally going crazy. Like, mm -hmm. like, I was just sad. Like, it's like every single day I was crying. So in everything. filing the lawsuit, what was your goal? Was your goal to make it stop? Was your goal to, what was your goal? My goal was to make it stop. My goal was, my goal was to make it stop. And my goal was because everybody for such a long time believe these lies mm. and I have addressed it so many times and every single time that I addressed it people was like you're lying you're lying you're lying you're lying and it's like until you go to court and the truth is revealed in court mm -hmm. you will never be free mm -hmm. you will never have a peace of mind mm -hmm. because people will like bring it up and call you a liar and say that you have these things say that you did these things it would just go over and over mm -hmm. again it, until you have, like, it's like you literally have to prove it in court mm -hmm. that it's not true. Mm -hmm. But now that you've proven it, you've won, I want to dispel something because I know we talked about this a lot privately. Your goal wasn't to try to change the landscape of how we do our work. No. Your job wasn't to try to change the law of us having an opinion because you're a celebrity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you put out music that we may like or not like. You may yeah. put out fashions that we may like or not like. Like, we're going to have opinions. You weren't yeah. trying to change that. But I think people thought that you were trying to come for all of our, no. our bags. No, no, no. That's not true. I just, I was really being harassed. And a lot of insane lies were put out about me. Like, 
about my family, about my friends. Like, it wasn't only me that was getting harassed. It was everybody around me. Like, I feel like this person goal was for me to kill myself mm -hmm. or to end myself because like the type of thing that they was doing i feel like that is the goal mm -hmm. and some people say that hurt people hurt people mm -hmm. but it's like sometimes hurt people gotta go to therapy mm -hmm. or gotta find god mm -hmm. because it was just intense like it was herpes it was saying saying herpes that insane lie about my dad some lie that my mom their cousin uh, oh, their yeah, husband, that. cousin, some shit like that, saying that one of my friends um, was doing crack uh, in front of a supermarket. Like, that's saying that you have HIV, mm -hmm. saying that I told the girl that Offset got pregnant to get an abortion. Like, those type of things mm -hmm. will ruin your mm -hmm. career. And so, I always say to people, once it's put on the internet, yeah. people believe it. Like, yes. People do not um, fact check anything yeah. about anything. Like, you know, like, uh, saying that I put a, 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 a beer bottle inside my pee, like, it was just like the lies were I getting. I heard the word. Yes, <laughs> it was just getting so intense and so ridiculous, and people kept talking about it and and making fun of me about it. Like it was just. And a then you very won. So time. now that you win, what does the win feel like? Does it feel? Do you feel vindicated? Do you feel now that it's kind of, it's you deaded it? Um, do you feel vindicated? I want to say vindicated. I just feel free. Mm -hmm. Like I, I feel free. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel, like, happy. Like, um, even when I won and everything, I was just crying and crying and crying because I felt like I dealt with this for such a long time. Mm -hmm. It was years. Like, what, two yeah. years? Yeah. And and some people thought that it was just so funny and hee hee ha. Because it wasn't so just what soft. she was saying. It was, like, all the other YouTube video or other creators yes. and blogs and news picking it up and sharing it with their community. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if Yahoo picks up, and I'm not saying they did, but if they pick up a YouTube clip or a comment or yeah. a reaction, that's 43, 50 million people who now saw yes. that. Yes. I just really want people to understand, like, I'm in a I'm in a way better space in my life. Like, I I could generally say that, like, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. It feels so good to say that because for a long time, I was so hurt. I was so depressed. My life was so great. And people just thought that I was so sensitive uh, I was getting so gaslighted to the point that it's like, you just hate black media. You just hate black media. And I'm like, what? They, they, I they, literally they, curse they, out everybody. They definitely made it a colorism thing. They made it a colorism mm -hmm. thing. It was just insane. But I think at this point, it's because they know you're going to respond. Because there's yeah. no way, everybody sees how you're a great stepmom to your stepkids. Everybody sees that you're, you know, your team and everybody is very diverse in all colors. You have you know, people from the LGBT community close to you. So, like, I, I think people know that, but I feel like they think you're easily gaslit. I think, I think, yeah, I feel like that's the issue. And it's it's crazy because it's funny to people. It, it was funny to people. Mm -hmm. But... How that, was your husband supporting you through all that? He was just, he just didn't, like, don't, he didn't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. He didn't even know what to do. Like, he would take me on vacation. He would be like, he would be like, oh, um, so somebody suggested, like... Therapy, like, like, oh, you, or like, he'll be like, you just don't understand. You're, you're so big. You're so amazing. You need to stop worrying what people say. This, this, and that. And it's just like, you don't understand that I'm, I'm hurt at the fact that people be coming for you, and you don't even be doing nothing mm -hmm. because they hate me so much. And it's like I don't give a fuck. hate me. And it's like, but it hurts me. Mm -hmm. It hurts me to feel like I'm a burden to. I'm like a burden other or people. something. But it had nothing to people. do with you, though. It just really, I just was really going through it. So listen, speaking of your husband, I love rap. I, I mean, I don't listen to a lot of the new shit. I don't understand the words. I don't want to <laughs> do TikToks. I feel like nowadays, most rap, if you're not doing TikTok, do you feel like you have to do a song that has to make it on TikTok for it to be a song? I'm going to get back to your husband in a minute, but I, I just thought about that. I, I don't think so. This Not you. I'm saying just general. Um, like generally, like now, do, do labels feel like you have to do a song that's TikTokable? I don't even know if that's a word. Well, you want to know something that I find out? Hmm. I find out that some labels don't really like TikTok like that. Why? Because they're not counting the spins, or they can't they, because get they're, they're not counting the spin, mm -hmm. and some people are not gonna listen to the whole song. Right. So it might make the song a little popular, but it just takes away so, from some of the spins. I mean, I do see people saying that like, oh, labels want you to do more TikTok friendly songs, 
But some labels really just be like, oh my gosh, like this is not really benefiting. Yeah. Like, but I remember when we were in that in that hotel room and we were having that meeting and you were saying, and you were listening to all the different songs, you were saying, I'm not doing a song that's a TikTok song. Then you pop on TikTok. Like they just take your con your clout. Uh, I mean, all the songs, they just, they just pop over there. People will try to trick you off your game mm -hmm. because I did WAP, right? And I just, I did WAP because I just, you know, that was just this yeah. song and it popped on, on TikTok. Right. You, the, you didn't have a TikTok dance set up. You didn't have no TikTok no, strategy. It just popped off. It just popped off. And then I did up and it popped <laughs> on TikTok again and everything. Like it wasn't like a strategy for it to go. No, it yeah. was never that intended to that. It just, it just happened. And then people, when they see that that's working for you, people start being like, oh, y'all making TikTok songs, y'all TikTok artists, blah, blah, blah. So that's how people trick you out your spot to be like, all right, if this is working for you, and and that and and actually worked on me because I was like, you know what? I'm gonna show them that I'm gonna make a rap ass song that is not TikTok, this and that, and then I did hot sh and did you like hot? I did like that. Mm -hmm. I did like you. All right, so another thing, because everybody just be thinking that y'all be kissing my ass and everything. Jason told me, like, I don't like that song. It, I ain't gonna lie, it hurt to say that, though. He was like, I just don't like that song. I'm like, okay, okay, I get it. <laughs> but, but did you, but did, were you disappointed at how it performed? Because all your other songs go straight to number one or right up there, top 10. Top um, it disappointed me, but it's just like a lesson because now I know what not to put in my album or not. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I mean, I wish it would have done how I wanted it to do, but if it didn't, I I, I moved on to the yeah. moved on to the next and and it popped and it popped. So okay, so going back to love really quick, we talked about your husband, we talked about social media, we talked about everything. Um, usually, you know, you pop off lettuce. You don't like this. You don't like that. Um, and then there was some music that came out. Now I I don't listen to the song, and I got a job to do. But there was this song that Quavo had, and the song was called Messy. Mm -hmm. Social media was talking. Everybody got to, and and this is me not rapping. So please stay off my Twitter because I don't know how to rap. I said Carisha, please, cause she too messy. My dog behind my back, but I ain't stressing. You wanted the gang. You should have just said it. We would have blessed it. Got messy. I I know it sounds different than that. And you were quiet. Mm -hmm. And the internet was talking. Why were you quiet? You know why I was quiet? Hmm. I was quiet because one thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find out the truth. Mm -hmm. And you know that I was finding out that truth mm -hmm. in and out. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I if I entertain something that I know is not true on the internet, people be like, oh, it is true because you're addressing it. But when I don't address it, it's true or not, it's true as well. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just not gonna entertain. Because if I entertain it, it's going to keep going longer and longer and longer. And at the end of the day, I know what's going on mm -hmm. in my house. Well, and, and you have no problem picking up a phone and calling to clear the air. But that's why I love that. That's the growth. You know what I mean? Because yeah. old Cardi would have been all over the Internet and this and that. And I feel like we have to let people grow. If social, yeah. social media, don't you think it's the biggest contributor to most of the yeah. problems that we all have? And though? you know what? Especially, especially when it comes to relationship, right? Because let me tell you something. When the Selena girl said that she was pregnant by Offset and she was showing her stomach, and but you know when she does those videos, yeah, she yeah. DMs the blog. Yeah, yeah, They're but not look, even true. she was showing her stomach. She even showed the baby and everything. And I was going so hard, like it's not true, it's not true. And every single time that I kept saying it's not true, people on purpose kept saying it's true, it's true, it's true. So it's like I have learned from those experiences not to even address things that's going on in my home when I know the truth. Cause it's like, people gonna make it worse. Cause it's just entertaining. Yeah. So. All right, so this is the fun part of my show. You know, when I went to lunch with Kevin Hart, he told me that I sip too much tea. And I know when I call you, you always want to kiki with me about what I'm doing over here at work. But this is the room in the set where we sip cappuccino, but the games be messy. <laughs> This, this game is called Name Drop. I'm gonna drop in the celebrity's name and you have to say the first thing that comes to mind that either we don't know or funny moment that you had or whatever. Okay, okay first person. We share the same birthday, Madonna. Madonna. I'm a big fan of Madonna. 
I know, I was on the phone. All right, so like I grew up listening to Madonna hardcore because like my mom, she's a really big hardcore fan of mm -hmm. Madonna. So it's like. So I said to Madonna that I want you and her to do the remix to Justify My Love. How would that sound? Would you do it if Madonna wanted to do it? I would be very afraid. Be Why? Because that song is like so perfect that I don't ever want to mess it up. The song is perfect. The video is perfect. I get a lot of inspirations from Madonna, mm -hmm. like, and I feel like a lot of artists, female artists should study her. I didn't really study her. I just grew up watching everything of her. I know like songs, I know like songs that didn't even went mainstreams of her. Like, yeah, I have to study Madonna. You've done your research. It's not even like a research. I just like know it because I grew up listening to Madonna and like seeing everything of her. And I feel like a lot of artists should like study her, like creative, the things that she believe, her openness, what she did like for female movements, like the way that she got dragged, everything. You both have that in common. But now that you both have pieced it up, we did the whole three-way oh, yeah. call. If I put you in a text with her and I suggest that you do it, justify my love, will you get mad? I I just, I would be scared. Like, you know how I get when you put me in the three-way I'd be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're putting me on blast. Yeah, okay, this next person, Megan Thee Stallion. Amazing. First thing that come to mind are funny moment. I just always like remember like uh, the first time that we met and like we talked like per face to face. It's just like oh my gosh, she's just so fun and she's just like so regular, just like me. So are you gonna deliver the plaque for WAP or is she gonna deliver? Who who owes me the plaque? I'm gonna put you on a group text later. <laughs> I'll ask both of you. Okay, Rihanna. Um, because I keep wait. You know, I want to put y'all in a text group and ask when the single is coming. <laughs> but I don't want to put the pressure on you oh. or her because she's busy with the baby. You got the baby. She got the Super Bowl. You know, I get really nervous when it comes to Rihanna. I just be like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. But I know, but she and I don't understand what that is. What is that? Is it just because you respect her so much? I don't know. I'm just really nervous. You know I'm an introvert, so I just get like very like, I can't breathe. I can't talk. I want to go home. I'm scared. <laughs> if Rihanna sent you a song and said, hop on it, would you do it? Of course. Okay. But it's but like like when it comes to Rihanna though, like it's it's more than like a, just a song thing to me. Like I really look up to Rihanna because like she just made like such the right moves to mm -hmm. their career. Like a lot of people don't make the right moves for their career and for their legacy, and she has made everything. Like it's, that's somebody that is like like I look up to like for real. Like, and that's she's a billionaire, and now you're gonna become billion <laughs> billion dollar Barty. Okay, next group. The Migos. Uh, the Migos really inspired me a lot, like on my come up. Like they inspired me a lot because it was the first time that I ever seen like shows, like people going crazy at shows and um, mosh pitting. And like it was the first time that I saw so many jury and so many jury, so many like richness. Mm -hmm. So many fame. I never really hung out with a, like famous people, and they were like the first famous people that I hung up with. And that's why I say like it's like they really made me want to like push harder. Like mm -hmm. it's like this is the life that I want, and uh, I feel like I'm I'm so happy that I I, I, I experienced all those great moments when they had like when they were all together and everything. Like it's like. It's a great memory. Like sometimes I cannot even listen to culture um, one because I get emotional, mm -hmm. and I no, love. And them I know forever. you say you don't like to be vulnerable, but I will say over the last seven years, the one time I think out of all those years with everything that you've been through, with everything we've been through together, the one time that I think you were the most vulnerable and upset, and I could hear you just really uh, um, sad was when Takeoff died. Yeah. And I remember calling you, and then I didn't talk to you for a couple of weeks. So where were you when you heard that he had passed? I, we was in bed. I was in, I was in bed. Um, we were supposed to go to Lala's party in New York, and my daughter threw up all all over my mm -hmm. costume. So me and I said, so we, Halloween was over. Halloween was over because mm -hmm. it was just so much throw up on the costume, and I had nothing to wear. So we just fell asleep, and out of nowhere, like like Offset phone kept ringing. My phone kept ringing, and like I Offset picked up the phone, and he's just like. No, and he's screaming and screaming, and 
Like he's screaming like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, what, what's going on? And he's like, take off is dead. And I'm like, and I smacked him. I said, don't say that. Like, don't say that. And then he just like screaming and just throwing things, throwing up, running all over. And I was just, I was so scared. Like I was, I was just crying so much. It was just, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. It was. Well, I think it was shocking for a lot of people because um, I tweeted something that I thought was thoughtful. I said I never got a chance to interview them together because I that was my, they're my favorite rap group. I never got to give them their flowers. I'm big on giving people their flowers. And um, anyway, I, you know, you called and checked me about that. It was a very sensitive time in your household. Yeah. It was just such a sensitive time in in my in my home, and like I just feel like everything was like so triggering like any little bad thing any little this every little whatever the crap to me was just like so triggering and like it was a lot okay it was a lot this is the last one wave and culture Please, so cute. I know. wait why does wave have bigger jewelry than me the <laughs> i know that that panda was gonna come out so big his pendant is really big what's the first thing that comes to mind it's a lot because when I be thinking about my kids, I just be thinking about like when, like when they fifteen, when they sixteen. I was always afraid to have a boy because I feel like all I, I wasn't really raised with boys, so it's like every boy that I'm close to is like bad. So I wonder like, <laughs> what type of son am I gonna have? Am I gonna have like a a badass kid? They're gonna be like, yo. what or am I going to have like a good boy? And it's like, if you have a good boy, like, I don't want my son to get picked on, but I want him to have some I heart. I thought Offset's a good father because I've seen him with his other kids. They're well-mannered. Oh, he, I mean, he's, he's a good he's a yeah, good dad and everything. Yeah. But it's like, you know, like, sometimes it's not even like really the parents. It's like, as you get older, like, you, mm -hmm. you just never know. Change. People change. Kids change. Yeah, people mm -hmm. change. Kids change and everything. Especially because, like, we do live in, in like, you know, New York, New York City. New Jersey, and it's like the the environment, the kids. I be scared. I really be scared. I ain't ready. Well, look, you're you're a good mom. You're a great mom. Uh, are you? Are, mom. Do you want to have kids? I'm I'm actually exploring it now. This year, I think I'm gonna have a kid this year. I I got two dogs to start with, and the reason why I say dog, and I know people are gonna say, oh, dogs and kids are different. I had to first see like. Can they survive at least a year? Like, can I feed them on time? Can I make sure? And I do have support, you know what I mean? So yeah, I think I think so, yeah. Cause you gotta, you build all this, you wanna pass it on to somebody. Yeah. Okay. But are you for real? I mean, I'm not gonna go to make the kid. I mean, you, there's, I got money, I can figure it out. Like there's options. I'm not, Tiffany Adder said that she would give me a kid, but we have to make it the old fashioned way. We not, we not doing that. <laughs> We gon' we gon' we gon' go to the clinic. Like, are you ready to be like a parent? Yeah, I think. Because you, yeah. I feel like you like you love your freedom. Too I love much. my freedom, but I'm also 45 years old. Like at this point, you know, it takes me two days to recover if I do all of this. You know, like I I do want to feel a sense of responsibility. I grew up in, you know, in foster care. Like I want to be able to, I want to be able to do for my kid what wasn't done for me. So yeah, but I will ask you, and this wasn't even in the notes. Will you be the gamma? I'll be the gamma. Oh, Tiffany, come on, let's go. All right, okay, real quick game. You have these paddles right on the side. We're just gonna run through this really fast because okay. I've had Cardi longer than her bedtime allows. Oh, she gotta please. go to the studio. All right, now I'm gonna ask you, this is a game to smash or pass. I'm gonna put up something on the screen and you're just gonna say smash or pass. But this is a different edition because you do have a husband that will pull up on me. <laughs> and Offset, I love you, we're not gonna play that. So we're gonna play it a little different. Okay, let's go, first one. Bow that yellow. Smash. Smash. This song literally changed your life. Changed my life. And it also changed mine because I took her, I, I introduced her to my friend, Christian Louboutin. Let me show you a picture of the three of us together in Paris. This is a picture <laughs> of me, her, and Christian Louboutin at dinner. Very fabulous. But look, this is how scandalous Cardi is. And this is why I don't like connecting no, my friends wait, with my no, friends. Hold no, on. No, 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 no. no, no I'm no, going to no, give you credit. No, no first wait, of watch all. Watch this. Look, she didn't look. Put up your feet real quick. Show the camera. See, see Christian? This is some. Let me show you how they connected. We have a dinner. Dinner's probably like three or four hours. Key, 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 key. We're not going to say nothing else. It was a great dinner, right? Yeah. Okay. This is us after dinner. Now, look at this. Okay. This was them by the end of the night. Cut me out. Both of them got in the car, left me on the side of the street in But Paris. that's because you wanted to keep on partying. Well, and, true. like, that's he true. wanted to go home, and I wanted to go home, and it was across the street. But, like, 
And let me tell people, stop playing with Jason because so many people <laughs> tried to connect me with Mr. Louboutin and it was Jason mm -hmm. that connected me with Mr. Yeah. Louboutin. So like, he don't be playing, like don't be playing with Jason like, oh, like, uh, Yo, but Jason he, is a little Did you fall in love with him that night though? Yes. I learned a lot from him. Yeah. I learned a lot. And I told the and I told him too, like it's like you need to bring back the hype. You did. Like people need hype. Oh, so so we're eating dinner and um I can't get into the details because that was private. But she's in there literally creative directing Christian on the type of shoes he needs to bring back. But he fell in love with you that night. I mean he just messaged me the other I fell day. In love he knows. With him. I, I respect him even more and more and more. But don't play I really just let me say it again. Don't play with Jason because so many people try to connect me with Mr. Louboutin and it was Jason mm -hmm. that made it happen. Like, so don't be playing with him. Y'all be playing like another, Jason B. And I'm going to make another commitment. I'm going to cut this clip. I'm going to send it to Christian and then I'm going to put Tubby and Christian together on the phone and they're going to get that deal. And I just want, I just want a <laughs> copy of the Hill signed by everybody. And I just, no, I want to check. I want to check. Okay, cool. This is the next one real quick. Tomorrow too. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. I like this girl. I love her. I text her that she's the real deal. She's the real deal. I really like her, mm -hmm. like a lot, like, like. <laughs> she's too gangster, much. like y'all are gangster. That's why. And but and, and it's not even that. It's like she's funny. Mm -hmm. Like she's funny. She's down to earth. She's cool. Like she reminds me of like my best friends. Mm -hmm. I really love her, and I just not like we're on social media. Da, da. I I love her when I see her on social media. I loved her in more in real life. Like she's just like the greatest. I love her. Me and her had a call because she was struggling with some people we'll post on she and like this picture posted on this blog or this or that. And I told her, this is the same shot we talking to Cardi about. Just ride your wave, keep doing yeah. you. Like I like her. I love her. I love and her. And 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 like if she she needs something, like it's like you already know. I know everything <laughs> and there. Let me know, girl. Like I will tell you. Like I've been through it all. You literally should own Hollywood a lot because you, you do know more than me. Like, anyway, that's nothing. Okay, this next one, real quick. Hot. <sighs> I like that the song, Jason. <laughs> I'm going to give it this. Okay, it's in the middle. Okay. But you want to know why I'm going to give it this? Because I went through a lot with this song. Like, it's like, it got to the point that it's like, I don't even want to put this song out anymore. Like, this is just driving me nuts. Did you feel pressure nuts. because people were pressuring you to put out a song? I, that mm -hmm. I felt really pressure, and then I, I I was feeling really pressure because people were saying like, "Oh, you're doing too much TikTok song." So I'm like, "All right, so I'm gonna do more of a of a alpha like of a of a male song." Mm -hmm. And it's like it just bit me in the ass. It just bit me in you the dropped, ass. Then 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 I like you you take and you run with it because then tomorrow two came out and everybody said their hardest. Yes, it's like, like it's like redemption. It's like I redeem myself, <laughs> but I still want to do another song with Lil Durk and, and Kanye. A different whole song. Well, let's get Kanye back to Kanye. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, next song. Of course, it's a smash because this is the song that I helped to create and got no credit for. Um, yeah, anyway, okay, we already talked about that. It, that was smash. Smash. Why you didn't submit for a Grammy for this? That's another thing I was mad at you about because this should have got a Grammy. This was huge. You know what? I know. I'm probably going to get a call later because she knows this is why I tell her on the phone. I tell you this on the phone. This is why... This is something that is like, I need to stop letting the internet, the internet control my life because I didn't want it. I didn't want to submit why because I was afraid that if I win, or if I, you know, what's so crazy. The internet got me even afraid of winning. I know that when, is when insane. You, when you said that to me, I wanted to jump through the phone and scream at you because what I loved about this song was it united two superstars, like two women who were like making these back in the studio and rewrite their. Yeah. You know, and all the costumes that came out. Every girl, every one of you girls that see a Cardi B album cover, you're not the one to put that on. Please stop. Everybody was leotard up and, <laughs> you know, but whatever. Okay, this song, this is one of my favorites. Press. Press. Woo. Press, press, is press, a, press, 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 press. Jason is don't a, need no press. Press is an un underrated song. It is. Press is really underrated, but when I perform it, people go crazy for no, it. No, it is. What, what underrated in terms of, like, on the charts? It, but like, the people love it. Yeah, like on the charts, it was it didn't perform as great, but we went to the club last night because we had to pre-celebrate this interview, yeah. and you were on the music. It was like every song of yours was out there, and people, my people were like, "Damn, she's literally everywhere." Anyway, all around. The okay, this song right here, this is my favorite too. Motorsport. Motorsport is a smash. Okay. It's a smash. I'm gonna just leave it at that. This is one of my favorite songs because when you came out, too. you you would look beautiful and you were dressing on it, but like you were a gangster. 
All right. All right, I love it. Okay, listen. Um, I say I'm big on giving people their flowers. Come on. Um, can we just really quick? Because she got to get out of here. Ah. Uh, oh, uh, that is so. Uh, Jason, Watch out for the con Kiko or Conchito stuff. or whatever that is. <laughs> Okay, he's the, this is my sister, he's Dominican too. All right, and I got red because, you know, you like red. This is so beautiful. Okay, hopefully you can carry that. Jason, Jason always, I don't, this is the thing, like, it's like, I be feeling like you're single because you want to be single because, like. This is the end of the interview, and we're so happy that Cardi B came. <laughs> no, <and> because <laughs> he always talking about, like, I'm single, I want a boyfriend, I want to get married already. But like, it's really you that be wanting to be single because it's like, all right, like you, you look good. Thank you. You yeah. give the greatest gifts. You always giving me gifts, mm -hmm. and you give the greatest gifts. And the sex is great. I don't know what the problem is. Cause you a yeah, no. Um, uh, you know, I wore this outfit today because every time I, you know, you always compliment me on my weight loss and stuff. I was gonna wear something kind of like. You know, hip hop is, you know, I got my little jewelry on, baggy, but I wanted to wear something a little more fitting because you always get on me when I wear stuff that's not fitting. But I do want to say to your face, I always get to tell you this on the phone, I love you so much. And it meant the world for me to have you. Here is my first guest. I'm not going to get emotional because I met Queen Latifah 30 years ago. And when I first started Hollywood Unlocked, I wanted to get a talk show and we went to Revolt and they told me no, that it wasn't the right thing for Revolt. And here we are celebrating the Jason Lee Show on Revolt with Cardi B. And it didn't, it didn't happen overnight. No. Cause a lot of people like. It didn't happen overnight, but it happened. And it happened. And it happened. And I, and I want to say to you that, you know, whether it's you I'm talking to or Rhea or Will Smith, cause when Rhea gave me the baby photos, I was in Dubai and Cardi called me. And she said, I'm so glad you got it. Yeah, I'm, you know, you were so happy for me. And, I, and I'm always happy for you. And it felt good to receive that love from you. And um, I just wanted to give you your flowers publicly because I've given you lots of flowers. Yeah. I've had people carry flowers in, but you deserve them. And I just want you to know, like everybody here at Hollywood Unlock, yeah. when, when, when you're being posted, I'm not telling them to post you. My staff love you. So, yeah, uh, yeah thank yeah. you. I mean, I mean, like, it's just like, I feel like it's, we've been like hustling, like for like the same amount of time. Like mm -hmm. you've been seeing how I've been hustling and I've been seeing how like you've been hustling. And it's just like, sometimes like people, could underestimate people underestimate and then like sometimes you just feel like like you just not where you want to be and it's just like like the work pays off and like keep you're going. finally here and like yeah. keep going because it's like it happens and people are seeing you like people just act like they don't see you especially mm -hmm. celebrities like they act like they don't see you and like you don't this and that and it's like mother see you and mm -hmm. like you're finally like here like mm -hmm. It started from like you started how to World unlock, got deleted. <laughs> it was really hard for you to get it back and finally get that traction back because sometimes like, like that could be the end. That could be the end, yeah. and it's not the end. And it's like now, like you're bigger than ever, like, yeah. and it just doesn't happen overnight. And like it's it's work, and people just don't want to put in the work. Like it it don't happen overnight, y'all. Well, listen, uh, we all know another song that we didn't put in Smash Your Past is Cloud. I hope I get a lot of it after this interview. Come on the show. It's fun. We have a fun time. I don't know how you're going to get all them flowers out the door, but thank you so much We're going to get it out the door. We appreciate it. Bye. Wait, wait, wait.